Okay, so uh, let's uh, just reaffirm this uh, idea of the amplification of very slow vertical motions into uh, very amplified horizontal motions. Uh, the book uh, asks you to imagine uh, two things. One is this top where you have very tightly wound thread and then you chuck it. So the thread is unwound at some speed which is uh, much slower like 30 meter per year uh, in the case of Ekman pumping but the top is going to spin uh, much 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 faster uh, in of the order of centimeter per second as in the meridional velocity and the vertical velocity right uh, you can also think of uh, squishing a uh, lemon seed it's called a pit I suppose which is got a sharp edge at one end and the rounded head and head at the other if you squeeze it at some point the pit may fly out at a much higher speed than the vertical squeeze you are giving it okay so let's write the uh, vertical gradient <coughs> <coughs> gradient of w dw dz as um, w ekman over h where h is the uh, height of the water column we are looking at w ekman is uh, pumping in and uh, beta vg for the interior flow was then f dw dz which you can write beta v as f w ekman over h because of this uh, approximation here and then you can estimate the amplification you get you take beta over here uh, and f or beta h becomes v over w e k so you can see what is the uh, amplification and uh, you can write that uh, with f uh, so, sorry um, f is 2 omega sine phi and beta is df dy and put that all together you can write it as a over h tan phi so when you consider the scale of the Earth's radius and the height of the water column and tan phi at any latitude, you essentially get an amplification of 8,000, which explains why vertical Ekman pumping of 30 meter per year can get amplified into uh, horizontal velocities of a thousand, uh, thousand times as centimeter per second, okay? In the lab, we can generate this basically by using the same old setup where you have a frictional disk at the top that can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise and produce a cyclonic or anticyclonic uh, frictional circulation with Ekman pumping or Ekman suction. And you make the bottom sloping so that towards the end where the water column is shrinking becomes the poleward direction like we saw the thin spherical cell uh, on a sphere, right? As B moved north, uh, the Taylor column moved north, it shrank or it ex uh, stretched as it moved south, okay? So this is the experiment in the lab where the disk is rotating and it, the dye is released with a plexiglass uh, in the middle and you can see that it's creating this uh, anticyclonic uh, gyre with a western boundary current uh, southward transport and a um, westward uh, or northward western boundary flow okay so that's kind of a quick reconfirmation of the theory of stretching water columns and western boundary intensification okay the other thing that happened in the 1940s was the Sverdrup theory proposed by Harold Sverdrup which revolutionized revolutionized dynamic oceanography. It's basically depth integrated circulation extending the concept we have developed uh, thus far. Uh, start with the continuity equation for an incompressible fluid. Start with the equations of motion where you have uh, surface uh, forcing, a friction, uh, frictional wind stress forcing. You take cross derivatives of this d dy and d dx uh, and you uh, remember the expression for the interior flow but now we are doing the surface uh, so that gives you beta v so just taking d dy of uh, this okay uh, f dw dz plus 1 over rho ref d dz d tau y 
dx minus d tau x dy. All we did was take the uh, x and y derivatives of the two equations and add them uh, together. Okay, there's no big mystery here. d dx, d dy, and d dx. Okay, so you can see d dx, d dy. I, maybe I said it reverse. Nonetheless, d dz is taken outside. We know what this is, right? This is going to give us the uh, Ekman pumping. So at z equals minus d, uh, w is 0 and tau is 0. So we are at the bottom of the uh, Ekman layer. And beta v, in that uh, expression we had derived before, is 1 over rho ref d tau y dx minus d tau x dy, which is our wind stress curl. So that is basically 1 over rho ref z hat dot grad cross tau wind. This is a vectorial expression of this uh, scalar wind stress curl. Okay, so beta v here, v is the integrated uh, meridional currents going from minus d to zero. So we are going down to some depth, deep enough where uh, vertical velocities are zero and wind stress goes to zero. Okay, so we're just integrating from the top uh, to bottom and we're defining the integrated meridional transport as minus d to zero v dz. V is, of course, the meridional velocity. Okay, so this is telling us that the integrated meridional transport is directly responsible uh, a response to uh, wind stress curl. We had already said that Ekman pumping introduces meridional circulation, whereas this is integrating down to some depth where the motions are negligible and saying that transport, meridional transport over that depth is related to the wind stress curl at the surface. So beta V equal to 1 over rho ref delta wind y dx minus delta wind x dy, which is 1 over rho ref z hat dot grad cross tau wind. This is a vector, of course. This is, of course, very similar to what we have been looking at for interior flow of beta V equals f times W Ekman over H, except this was current, whereas this is vertically integrated transport. Why? Because, of course, curl wind is directly related to Ekman pumping, right? That's what determines the cyclonic and anticyclonic gyre. That's what determines the Ekman pumping or Ekman suction. Okay, how does it work? Uh, here we have taken H times V can be V, then you'll still get uh, beta V equals F times W Ekman, which is curl of tau wind. Just showing the equivalence here. Okay, so we'll see how this works. What can we do with this relation? It just came out of nowhere and it's so simple. So what does it give us? How is it useful? It turns out that actually it can give us incredible amount of information and it's very useful.